Hello and welcome to Interpropedia. If you're new here, my name is Rosa, I'm an interpreter. And the other day I was scolded by a judge in open court because of my interpretation of the word woman. So in this video, I am going to tell you all about that. Hopefully at the end, you can share your comments or advice about the whole situation. I'm recording in my car because I am in between assignments. Lately, I've been working mostly in person. Ironically, because I used to work mostly remotely since long before the pandemic. Hopefully, the sound and lighting are okay. The thing is, I was interpreting for a defendant in his sentencing hearing. So basically, the hearing where this judge was going to impose the punishment for the offense that he had previously pled guilty to. In a sentencing hearing, it's common for defendants to bring family members, friends, and other people who can speak to the judge on their behalf to ask for a more lenient sentence. It's also common for defendants themselves to address the judge and they usually apologize for what they've done. They sometimes express remorse and depending on the case, they may tell the judge about changes they've done in their lives or other reasons they have not to commit this offense again and things like that. So in this particular case, when the defendant was addressing the judge, in his statement he says the following, and I'll say it in Spanish first, but I'll follow with what I interpreted in English. He says, Mi mujer y yo construimos una casa en mi país which I interpreted as my wife and I built a house in my country. The defendant continued his statement for a few more moments. I kept interpreting and when he finished, the judge said something like this. I don't know if anyone else noticed this. Perhaps I was the only one who picked up on this, but the defendant never said the word wife. He said my woman. So that's what you should have interpreted. And then he finished by saying, you have to interpret everything that is said exactly as it is said without changing, adding, or omitting anything. I was, of course, simultaneously interpreting for the defendant while the judge was literally scolding me. And before someone jumps at me to say that this term can be ambiguous and this and that, let me tell you, yes, I know that sometimes Spanish speakers say mi mujer to refer to their significant other, their partner with whom they live, but are not legally married to and all of that. But in this particular case, it had already been established that they were legally married. So that ambiguity was out of the question. And just to make sure we're all on the same page, here's a screenshot of the definition of the word mujer, which as you can see, among other things, is a synonym of the word wife. Let's not forget that in traditional marriage ceremonies, they sometimes say at the end, los declaro marido y mujer. And this doesn't only happen in Spanish. This happens in other languages too, like French and German and Portuguese. So when we interpret this term into English, it's obviously important to distinguish the two to ensure we convey the exact tone and meaning of the original message. Because in Spanish, saying esta es mi mujer and saying esta mujer es mía are two different things. Anyway, I had a split second to think about what to do. In that split second, I thought, should I respectfully address this judge and say that I stand by my interpretation? Should I ask him to approach, to explain the nuances in the meaning of this word in this context or even pull up a dictionary definition? But then I thought, we were at the sentencing stage of the case already. The case had already been decided. He already pled guilty. So I opted to just say, yes, your honor. And then everything continued as if nothing happened. Now, after the hearing ended, I kept thinking about what to do. I seriously thought about writing an email addressed to the court where I would include links to dictionaries supporting my interpretation and explaining basically what I've shared with you in this video. And I thought about a couple other options, but then I remembered that I'm a freelancer, which fortunately for me means that I'm 100% free to decide where to work and who I work with. So I ended up deciding to put this judge on my blacklist. I will not take any cases where he's involved. I feel I cannot uphold my oath to interpret accurately and to the best of my ability, knowing the expectation is for me to interpret literally and not conceptually. I know it was not the best solution if we're thinking of the bigger picture. 
I feel that perhaps I could have used that opportunity as a teaching moment for that judge and the attorneys and other people present in the courtroom that day. But considering the overall outcome, meaning how the hearing went for the defendant and all parties involved, the impression that I left among other people present that day, which I believe was that I remained professional, I feel good with my choice and I stand by my choice. Now, what would you have done in a situation like that? Has something like this ever happened to you? I can't wait to read you in the comments because this is a very touchy subject among interpreters. Anyway, that was it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Adios.